not like it's not like I'm saying anything anyone doesn't know. All right, wait. Oh what? yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. Is this happening? Is this happening? Okay, okay. You're going live. Okay, well, I got some, I got some stuff to talk about here, folks. You do? Action sports. <laughs> put, on your, put on your eclipse glasses. Okay, what? Your shoe has an inner hole? What? Yes. Oh. I told you. Uh, Verizon. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Tune in. No, they, they get it. You get it? No, they know. No, Trust right. me. They know. Then what's the topic? <laughs> oh you just share God. it with me. Hey, everybody. It's Eclipse Day. <laughs> Jesus. And we are, we're live. And uh, we're coming at you. Is, is the Eclipse over? We don't know if it's over yet. We're still okay, going. there's Hold the on. password. Chris is sharing his password with me. Can't you just, uh-huh. Can't you just share I don't know how to do that. You don't know how to do it. Oh God! Is it on and typing? Yes. Todd is not prepared. I'm going to start the podcast. Oh God! I'm I'm starting it. I'm starting it. This is the the Monday Mass, the world's greatest action sports podcast, aka an action sports podcast about Todd learning how to use a computer. Here, look, no, okay. There it is. Now you got a Wi-Fi password over there. Yeah. See? This is uh this is called Todd's Tech Time, and how's Todd's Tech Time going? This is a new part of the podcast where we just watch Todd not figure things out. How's it going? What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm just going to start because obviously uh, you don't have any idea of what's going on here. This is the first one we've ever done. (laughs) And we we have a representative from one of our sponsors here and everything. And... She's really getting a full picture of what this podcast is really we all about. Even, we haven't even started the podcast. We're star- I'm started. Now people are just listening right now. I'm live. We're live. And we're going. Uh, the Monday Mass with Chris Cote and Todd Richards. This is an extra special eclipse edition. Although the eclipse is over, it was about 65% awesome here in Encinitas, California. Hopefully all right, we're good. You got... To see it wherever you are in the world. Are you good? We're good now. Just came in hot yelling. That's actually, good. Actually, I don't know if we're good. Oh, my God. Is that right? Is that right? I think so. Did you make up that password? No. Oh. I got new Wi-Fi here in the building, so. That's the worst. I'm having a problem here. <laughs> Freaking password I've it's ever It's April seen. 8th, 2024. And we're just going to jump right into the ad block because everybody loves the ad block. If you tune out after the ad block, thank you for tuning into the ad block. This podcast is brought to you by our friends at Spy Optic. As you can see, Todd and I are wearing our specialized glasses. These are our Eclipse glasses, but you can tell because they're because of the coating. Yeah, the coating works. So, so that was awesome watching that Eclipse go go down or go across. Uh, Spy, not only do they make great Eclipse viewing glasses, but they make RX glasses like this. And uh, they make all kinds of cool stuff. Very so fast, very Spy fast. Optic at Spy Optic on the ground. I feel like this is a good time to let everyone know that one of our uh, fans, my sent, favorite fan, sent us the Dune popcorn bucket. So tell us and how I'm, this Dune popcorn bucket works. Todd, you talked about this on the podcast not too long ago. I'm look. I, I, my hand has been in here for about an hour. Because I, it only goes one way. <laughs> it's a one-way Dune popcorn bucket. It's metal though. That's gonna make the popcorn trick quite difficult. <laughs> okay, so You're this is. You're gonna have to go through the top. This is the Dune popcorn bucket. In case anyone was having any uh, <laughs> delusions of what this was all about, the Not Dune anymore. the Dune popcorn bucket is everything you thought it would be. Oh God! Well, that's from our, our very special fan, Ko, Ko, our special fan. That's wonderful. Thank you for the Dune popcorn that just bucket. Came, uh, that just came out of the kindness of her heart. For Todd, I can't. I didn't get anything. These are like super hard to find. <laughs> Not for uh, <laughs> Detective K. Why? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, <coughs> Mike Kelly. 
thoughtful. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Uh, another, like, maybe she's a, a new sponsor of the show. Uh, who else we got? We got Sunbum. We got Sunbum because guess what? The sun is, the sun, the only time you, di you did not need Sunbum was for about 10 minutes today. I think you can still get sunburn during the eclipse. For real? Yeah. Oh. Well, then I only take it back. On, only on half your body. I take it back. You always need sun bum. Uh, we got the special stuff right here. This is what I'll be using all summer long. I'm going to put some on right now for those uh, not watching on video. I'm putting on some Julian Wilson nose coat right there. Uh, it's slightly tinted, but man, it works great. So any other time of, of your life where there's not a solar eclipse, you should be wearing sun bum because uh, this is very important for all of us, and I'm sure a lot of people out there that go outside often. And we've got Opus Footwear, O-P-U-S Footwear on the gram. We've got some shoes behind us. They'll be presenting skate news as well. And we're very excited to be joined by a, a special guest, a representative of this incredible product right here. This is Machu Picchu Energy at Machu Alyssa, Picchu dot energy. Welcome, to the, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, Alyssa has much better equipment actually than us. She's got an actual camera. She's got uh Yeah, she's a more phone. she's way better equipped she's to got a uh cool hat. to run this podcast yeah, than we and are. She and she bought I just, us some fresh just just for the record, Alyssa should be she would have been running Quicksilver, but she moved on to a better job. <laughs> she Is was that the surf industry she news. She was the glue that was holding that place together for a long time. Wow. And then she left and then guess what happened? What's up with this hat? It looks like I have a crayon on my head. A what? Crayon. <laughs> uh, some Machu Picchu ASMR for you. Here we go. Dude, you took a sip right when I popped the top. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Oh, my bonus is People don't have all day. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Our people? Our people don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> they surf, skate, they snowboard, and they if listen to this podcast. you're just joining us, I've got the dude popcorn bucket. That's both of ours, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't you share the dune popcorn bucket? Where Everyone I talk to has. Where do you leave it? Do you leave it in the bathroom? Bedside. You leave it in bedside the bedside of your bed? Yeah. <laughs> it's too good. It's really good. Uh, what else we got here? Mammoth Mountain. At Mammoth Mountain. Mom, leave me alone. I'm eating popcorn. <laughs> I'm still eating popcorn. Dune's been out for four months. I'm still eating it. Uh, guess what? Uh, officials have reported that there's been over 300 inches of snow. At Mammoth since the season began. Let me see some. Let me just do a little bit of math here. Okay, so that's a lot of snow. Oh all right. God. And if we divide 300 oh, inches we hit this. by 9. Okay, that's 33.33 times 9 inches of snow. That's a lot of snow. Uh, Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce. Oh, I want to thank Mammoth Mountain, Gabe Taylor, hooking up my dudes. London and Roman Cote, who had an epic mammoth spring break with about 10 of their buddies. Eclipse were sick, Todd. They got better snow than you did during spring I'm break. I'm sure they did. That? At I'm Mammoth sure Mountain. Did. Mammoth Mountain. Uh, Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce. Wait. At Try Bachan's. But wait, there's more. But there's some Bachan's news today. What? The sweet honey Bachan's came out today. Justin, where's, where is it? What's it called? I don't, it's called Sweet Honey. Oh, Sweet Honey. Didn't it's you have a different name for it? Well, I call oh, it miso honey. Miso honey. Yeah, maybe that's their next. I one. don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna run with the miso honey. Miso honey. Oh, but that's a the good name, sweet though. honey, bachans barbecue sauce is out now. It's got a base. Can't wait. It's got like a base of soy sauce, so it's got it's got like a, it's a tinge. Soy base. Soy base. All right. That was my nickname in high school. Let's move on. If you okay. are wondering why my voice is completely fried. Yeah, why am I sitting so close to you when you sound like this? No, it's like this from Ken's thing because I had to scream at everyone. Oh, in well the I was there too. And my voice is fine. Well, obviously you weren't screaming as loud as I was. I was trying. Um, before we get out of the ad block, guess what? The Dana Point Film Festival is happening at Dana Point Film Festival. That's May 2nd through the 5th. It's going to be super fun. It's in Dana Point. If you, <laughs> if you wanted to know where the Dana Point Film Festival is, uh, it's going to be rad because on um, May 2nd through the 5th, May 2nd, there's a fun little soiree to open it up. Uh, May 4th, that's Volcom Night. Friday night, they're going to be showing Munch and Psychic Migrations. Sunday, closing night, Rip Curl is going to be showing two films. Tom Curran and his son will be there jamming. It's going to be epic. Get your tickets now at DanaPointFilm.com. Also, Sunbender's playing April 10th at the Casbah. That's Wednesday. 
going to be awesome with Vito and the Treef and Infinity Eyes. And I will be DJing yet again at Corner Pizza this Thursday. Todd will be there four or five minutes for sure. And always appreciate seeing Todd at my gigs. He's a very supportive friend. It's free pizza. Surf News brought to you by Hanson Surfboards. You can get Sunbum at Hanson Surfboards. You can get Spy Optic at Hanson Surfboards. Basically, all of our sponsors you can get at Hanson Surfboards. Do you know that? See? And if you run into Todd on the street, he's probably going to have some Machu Picchu on him. So ask Did him. Did you bring us some Machu Picchu? Oh, we got more. What are you? We're well, drinking it right I now. Know, this is I fresh out the Machu Picchu wagon. That's great. You you got a car like in the shape of a, of a can that's yellow with Machu Picchu on I it. Don't run that. That's tight. Um, what else we got here? Okay. So I got uh, I I've I've had some mixed reports about the eclipse, but one thing I did read: the best place to surf and watch the eclipse, Waco, Texas. Really? Oh, was that was that in the path of totality? Total. Yes. Wow. Say that again. Path of totality. That is such a cool phrase, Todd. You sound so smart when you say that. So have you seen? Is there pictures already? Um, no, because it might have been raining. Well, it might have been then a, it's just a just weather issue. Then it just gets dark. It just gets a little darker, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens. No, like path of totality means it gets like fu- it's like nighttime. Right, and animals start going getting weird. Right. It gets really cold. Yes. And people start saying the it's apocalypse a, is happening it's now. A pre- I mean, the whole eclipse thing is really cool. Can you imagine like being... Like, you know, 700 stone years age. ago. Yeah, Stone Age. Yeah. And you just don't know what, imagine. you don't know what's happening. And yeah. all of a sudden the sun just like goes away midday. Yeah, and like birds go to sleep. It's crazy. Anyway, so that, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, last last podcast, Todd, when we were in here talking and being super smart about action sports, uh, Bell's finals had not happened yet. It was basically an hour before Bells started. So this might seem like old news, but it's actually news because we didn't really get to finish talking about I did it. Bells pick, is a wrap. I did pick the women's winner. I did pick the women's winner as well. No, you didn't. Who did I pick? Not Katie Simmers. Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah, I did. I picked Katie Simmers as well, but no one. So Katie Simmers won. Right. Buzzer beater over Joanne DeFay. And, you know, I think while the waves overall for Bells were not great, I think the storylines, the underdog tales – an excitement the made up for it. Do you agree or disagree? The w- I was eclipsed by the whining. Eclipsed. <laughs> Good job, Todd. Uh, so, yeah, Katie won. Jean DeFay got second. And then it was the biggest boy, the big boy himself, throwing down the most spray. Big boy, big spray, Cole Hausman, getting the dub over his good homie and 2% crew member, Griffin Colapinto. Have we figured out what the 2% is yet? Well... There's a new intrigue happening, right? Kolohe and Dino has parted ways with his sponsor, O'Neill. He rode for O'Neill for a couple years. Right. Did some great things with O'Neill. But now, the main st- – well, Red Bull, I think, is still main sticker on his board. But the second biggest main sticker on his board is the 2% logo, hmm. which, which lends the, the, the question – Will this be a clothing brand? Now, I, I want to interject something here. Interject. <coughs> when, you are, when you are of age, Kay. say like Kolohe. What age? I don't know. Just like you're, of what age? You're, you're sunsetting your career. Right? Okay. Well, he's still like just 30. Just hear so. me. I know. Okay. Go ahead. But he's been, he's, you know. He's it's been doing just, it for a minute. Th- 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 there's a lot of turnover in the sport. Yes. When you're of that age, just like my age, okay. and you say you're parting ways with the brand. Right. Should we just say they got cut? Because usually that's what happens. Uh, Is that like a better way, like a more nerfed way of saying? Parting ways. Yeah, we've parted, we've parted ways. I think parting ways is kind of it's the blanket statement. Because I, I quitting or fe- getting I cut. feel like ain't no one quitting at that phase. Like no one's quitting a sponsor at that age. What if he's quitting to, go to, to the start his own company? Maybe. It seems like two but, percent but gets also, a lot of media coverage. But so also, if you idea. if you were the smart guy, you would stay with that sponsor until you had enough, you know, until you were about to launch your new thing. Well, that sounds like the launch is underway. I'm just saying, I'm a logical guy, and that's the way I follow the logic well, train. Logical. Okay. Well, that's an interesting. That's an interesting comment, Todd. I mean, if I was to say, "Oh, I parted ways with," like, let's say, quick. No, quick cut me. Like that's because I don't want to part. What if ways. I say Todd parted ways with the Monday Mass? What does that mean? It means I got paid <laughs> to leave. You got cut. I got cut out. 
Here's what the rankings look like on uh, on on the top for the men and the women on the WSL Championship Tour. Uh, we got Griff in the number one spot, Ethan Ewing two, John John Florence three, number four Jake Marshall That's up pretty, with it. That's brilliant. Number five Jack Robinson, and some notable big moves again. The big boy Cole Hausman moves up eighteen spots. He was well below the cut line, living in the basement, you know, living in mom's basement. That's a I just mean, just. That's rotting a, down there. That is a big celebratory move. Jumped up 18 spots to number eight, well above the cut line. Rio, Rio. Wida moved up 10 spots to number 11, That's above the cut line. And this is wild. There's no Brazilian representation in the men's top 10 for the first time in a decade. Well, obviously, it's the judge's fault. According to you <laughs> and Gabriel. Uh, yeah, that's just a strange stat because mm. it's rare. I feel like, I mean, at least Gabriel is surfing so good. Yeah, which I don't know what's going on. Better, you like the pink ones better or the green ones? No, oh, these these are fresh. Oh well, then give me those. Yeah, but yeah, thank you. Like my voice is like very. Yeah, I won't make you talk too much. James Earl Jonesy, right now. Uh, there's trouble as we head into the what's it called? Western Australia Margaret River Pro. There's trouble for. Kelly Slater, Seth Moniz, both Poopo brothers, among others, who are below the cut line. The cut is coming, people. The most savage cut of the year. The most brutal slicing cut through the field of championship tour surfers. It's happening at Margie's, so get ready for it. Buckle up. Women, top five. Katie Simmers, Joanne DeFay, Molly Picklum, Caroline Marks, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. <gasps> Leaky, Sawyer Lindblad, Alyssa Spencer, and Sally Fitz all need a big result because the cut is coming. It's coming in hot, and it's coming in sharp. It's going to be painful for a lot of surf fans out there and surfers. That's rough. Yeah, it's rough. It's a rough cut. Um, you're against it. I'm kind of in the middle. Neither for or against it. I like the idea of a playoff kind of feel Well, I don't, at the end of the year. I don't mind, like, some kind of a, a culling. Like, yeah. if you have to be in, like, but... You know, we we talked this to death, but like, you know, if you put in all this time and effort, like, right, you, like, I guess if you, if you're not in a position to ever fight back into the, you know, to fight back into being contention, yeah, like maybe that's when you get the snip. But then, like, you know, going forward, like, Kelly's always in; he always seems to get wild cards, you know. So it's not like a big, like, I hope so. It's not like a big bummer. I don't know. I feel like Kelly's fallen off the. T- tour like in points a bunch of times yeah and then he's just back you know yeah. because he's given opportunities and it's the kelly slater over. clause right and i agree with it yeah, i think it's i, I think, think kelly I think did, totally gets and does what he wants what we we want it's a good position <laughs> uh margaret river could start april 11th uh todd richards hi was interviewed in stabs how surfers get paid episode Something the sexualization of women surfing. Todd, you've been sexualizing women surfing. This Todd, came how out, come you got interviewed? This came out of nowhere because I kn- I know I got I was interviewed by Stab a long time ago for how surfers get paid. Okay, I figured it was more because the, a lot of the the questions that I was being asked were more like geared towards Kelly Slater, Quicksilver, just in industry. general. Like how do you, how does it play in other action sports? And I remember just getting one question about. Um, oh, so this was not a recent interview. This no, was this was a while ago. Kay. This was like a, like a year ago. Right. And then I remember getting one question about, you know, just I think it was it was kind of a general question. I think it was actually it was a question about the twerking incident. Okay. And and what did you say? I, I basically just said like, look, it's if if you want to do that and you have people that are willing to pay for that, yeah, do it. Yeah, it's fr- it's free money, right? That's and that's, that's what exactly I said. In the what thing. you said? That's I said it's quote. free money. That's it really is. Quote. I mean, if you think about like I snowboard for a living, it's pretty much free money. Yeah, because well, I'm like, going to do it anyways. I think that that episode is really well done. It's a, obviously a touchy subject, but I think they approached it really well. They interviewed all the right people. Well, Anastasia Ashley is probably one of the smartest the best. people. Yeah, in uh, I guess the women's surf marketing. Yeah, and there's you can kind of tell. That there are some people that maybe are a little bit jealous of the fact that she's kind of worked the system to bend for her. And still relevant, still getting paid, still killing it. And, but she's in her own – like she's not – She's a, in her own lane. She's not a threat to anyone that's in 
no. in that lane that's no. in the competitive lane. But is it interesting? I mean, I, I feel like that's a amazing that's an amazing show, and it's almost a blessing that I didn't get interviewed because in my time at Transworld there could have been some objectifying moments, but also a lot of celebratory moments of women in surfing. So you mean celibate moments? So that uh, basically I'm saying like. Yeah, of course I would want to be interviewed by Stab like Todd, <laughs> but I wasn't. So, but it's, it's fine. weird though, because I I still have to pay for premium. Well, it's it's fine. I mean, whatever. Hey, let me. I don't have to be liked by. I want to be liked by everyone and and wanted by everyone, but it's, I don't have to be. Let me ask you this, okay? So you're you're interview me. You're deep in the WSL. Okay. Okay. Sort well, I'm a. You're deep. I'm a contractor. You're in there. I, w- I, w- I would like to be in there more. You're part of the. E- you have. E- you're on email chains. Okay. Who's, no. Who's the new dude? Uh, I read about it on the internet. Just Apparently, like there's uh, there's a new head of the WSL. Yeah, and they're not re- uh, revealing the name as of yet. No, no, it's out. Who it's is it? It's on Stab. What do they it's do? On Stab Premium. You don't have a where do they come from? Um, a vi- the video game industry. Oh, really? Yeah. Like where? Riot Games, I think. Riot Games. Yeah, I didn't look too much into it because. Um, I just didn't have time. I was just, you know, I was cleaning the office. We have a guest in here from Machu Picchu, so I wanted it to be presentable. Um, I, I hope, I no, hope it's, I no hope one's it's gonna fit. No one will notice the drums. I've disguised them as a ghost. <laughs> There's a ghost over there. Don't look over there. Um, I mean, is like, is that big news? Kind of, because you know, you figure that someone that's going to be a leader, you know, a captain of a ship, you would want them to be seaworthy. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I I feel good about somebody coming from the video game industry, to be honest. Oh, really? Because look what happened in the X Games. What if it, what is X Games? Exactly. <laughs> so well, I'm excited. Here's to hoping. Look, I am going to Tahiti and El Salvador. Okay, so I'll do my best. So you're just saying d- don't bite the hand that feeds. Well. I, if you don't know the hand that feeds yet, you know, give the hand that feeds a, some uh, uh, some time. Okay. To feed you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Give them some. Give them some time to feed you, Todd. Give them enough rope. Uh, what else we got here? Todd was on. Stab. Oh, this this I was, was not. pretty cool. This is cool. This is a uh, Machu Picchu relevant news right here. Okay, go. Go ahead. All right, Nathan Florence is joining his brother John. John. Uh, Nathan is joining him on Florence Marine. Yeah. Which is a pretty big deal right i think this is probably one of the biggest sponsorship changes slash you think that's items. weird like okay if you're going to ride for your brother's company right like how do you negotiate with that you're like bro come on like how well, would you with your brother justin like say justin had a company okay and y- and justin's like i want you to ride for us but I you're but you you're on another company how do you negotiate you with go your brother? for more than you would go for any other company this is your brother you're like no dude here's this is what we're doing I don't think there was probably a lot of back and forth, and I know that Nathan and John John are both savvy business people with smart people around them as well. Do you think he, like? Do you think he offered him a piece of the brand? Definitely. Okay. So what I saw online, six figure contract with equity. So six figures, a yeah. couple hundred grand mm-hmm. with equity, which is I feel like the most important thing, smartest thing that you know young rippers can do is to own part of what they're riding for i think that's great nate, okay. nate florence rode for vans for 20 years and the vans will stay on his now place. where you can only buy florence marine stuff online it's not um is no, it available it's at stores? shops yeah it's at shops specialty shops okay but the you know it's like they make stuff that uh, for j- example <laughs> jm sales and service says isn't 25 percent of zero still zero? Oh. <laughs> Shots, deep insider shots industry, fire, industry, industry right insider there. industry shots. insight. Uh, I've heard they're the fastest growing brand in surfing, and um, they make uh, they make stuff that actually that people can use when getting extreme in the ocean. Like Nate Florence is wearing a full suit, like a lycra full suit, tights because he said the sun is his worst enemy. Mm-hmm. So. It's stuff like that, you know, cool windbreaker. I, I would wear it. I would totally wear it. Hint. <laughs> you'd wear what? A full suit? Florence machine. A f- you'd wear a Florence full X rash machine. guard suit. In, ta- in, in times. At, at you times. would. You'd <laughs> wear a full on rash the guard podcast, suit. Yeah. If they provided it for me, I would wear it on the podcast. And in the ocean. Uh, Todd, as a nerd, <laughs> you might like this. Let news. me, okay, hold on. Before, okay, before we move on to the nerds. Yeah. 
here's something that I, I always question. Okay. Like we're totally fine wearing wetsuits. Right? right. Like we're like to wear a wetsuit into the ocean, down the beach, just wearing around a wetsuit yes. on the beach in in the parking lot. Like at what Rubber point Rubber with lycra sandwich. Right, but I'm just saying like at what geographical point is it not cool to wear the wetsuit anymore? Is it like right past the parking lot? Oh, I- you mean well, it's just weird because if you wore like a a f- like a neoprene rubber suit anywhere else, yeah, you have the police call. I think you. within two hundred feet of the beach. So you have to be two hundred feet or less from right. the, from the water. Yeah, I mean, this is why Kook of the Day was pretty much started because people were wearing wetsuits into banks, into fast food chains, to breakfast, to lunch. You know, around town. I mean, it really is the suit for all occasions. It really is. You know, yeast mode was a hugely popular mode for people to be in for a long time. I haven't seen a lot of that lately. I did see a guy. So downtown Encinitas is roughly three blocks from the ocean. and It's right, out still it's right outside of the comfort zone. There's still a fish out of water element when you see somebody walking in downtown with a board mm-hmm. or like a group of you know, a group of kids in their bathing suits, and they have, like, towels, and obviously around the beach. That's fish out of water. That, anytime you're in an urban downtown scenario. But in Encin- downtown Huntington Beach. I feel like Encinitas, you, know, you, get, you, get a, you get a, there's a buy there. But. Kind of. But, like, you. Like but on no the east side of the sidewalk, walking past businesses, yeah. wet in trunks uh-huh. with a surfboard. I and liked it. And also. I like that. You have to have your wetsuit kind of just pulled down. Yes. But there's a big difference between like walking with a wetsuit, the top pulled down. Yes. Or just wearing a full zipped if up. If you wa- if your wetsuit is fully zipped up and you're wearing it around town, it's probably a rental. Mm-hmm. A rented wetsuit. And you're just like, I'm gonna get the most use out of this wetsuit I rented. And so I'm just gonna walk around town with it. I'm gonna let the yeast build and the next person that rents it is going to get free yeast. With this rental. That is how the next super virus is created. Yeah, ye- wetsuit yeast. All right, so what are you going to tell me? Silver Surfer movie is being made. And the surfer, who is in fact silver, will be played by Julia Garner, who you might know from playing Ruth, the screaming daughter on the on the oh show yeah. Ozark. Yep. Also, the Mandalorian, Pedro Pascal, will be playing Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. Vanessa Kirby will be playing... Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman. Joseph Quinn is Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. And Ebon Moss Bachrock. That's a good Ebon Moss Bachrock is Ben Grimm, the thing. Mm. Comic book fans are buzzing this film. Todd, get ready for it. Get your tickets now. It's going to be out July 25th, 2025. So we have some time. <laughs> We've got some time to prepare. Uh, it's going to be sh- uh, set in a 1960s alternate universe. I wonder what kind of popcorn bucket they'll have for that. Where is this? Can I get a Can I get a grab? Do you want to put just you go lefty? Oh, there's no popcorn left in there. <laughs> I'm just going to do the whole show with this on here. You this know how like such you know, a thoughtful. You know how yeah, like at, at parties there used to be the thing where you were um, Edward Forty hands when the people would tape. Oh, you duct tape you duct tape to your hands. What if you just duct taped? Two dune popcorn buckets to your hands at the party. Well, you g- it's they're not easy to find. No. Nope. Look at that. God, you're just going to blow that thing out on day one. You've got to save <laughs> some of the elasticity inside of that for later. Uh, well, else we got Dane Reynolds and friends have a new video out that's awesome. It's called Do a Great Job of Doing Nothing. How fucking long is this surf block? It's not much longer. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you about a great All right. Dane Reynolds is really good at surfing and so are his friends and they filmed this cool thing and they deserve credit. They deserve these people who are pop, pop watching and listening to know that Chapter 11 is doing great things. If they didn't know. Filmed primarily at Emma Wood. Emma Wood. Yes, you're right. Um, the first QS of the North American season went down. The Jacks Pro was in HB all last week. The Encinitas Board Riders. Alyssa, you were there, right? Got the win. You How was report? it? Luca yep. won. I have it. La Maquina. Luca Messinas. Machu Picchu Rider. See, this is all organic. So this is Machu tie. Pichu These are or- this organic tie-ins. There are organic tie-ins. Hmm. Which one is this? It's Ooh. Ocean Citrus. Ocean Citrus. The mint is the mm. best. Mm. That's the best one. According to you. 
but according to I me, keep going. and Luca Messina's Ocean Citrus is the best. Kira Pinkerton won for the women. It was a great event. And at the moment, Luca Messina's and Kira Pinkerton are at the top of the North American QS. There's only been one event, but they're still at the top. Mm-hmm. And now it's time for your mid-show ad block. Let me do this one. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Bubs Naturals at Bubs Naturals. They've got all kinds of stuff your collagen needs. Oh, yeah. I ha- I'm full Chris of is it. Chris is full of collagen. Okay, four days without biting my fingernails, and they're growing in so nicely. Are you still biting your nails? No. Not, not since four days ago. That's how you're going to get sick, dude. Exactly. You can't bite your nails. You know, I quit biting my nails during the pandemic. But then I started slowly doing it again. You're and back. I, 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 I think I got, I think I get more sick. I get more colds when I'm biting my nails. So yeah, I'm not you're doing just it. Full of stuff. Well, Bubs Naturals will keep those nails growing. Bubs Naturals is going to keep them growing. At Panic and Coffee and Tea on the Instagram, Panic and Coffee and Tea, waking up San Diego since 1969. You can find them at the airport and right here on the 101 and in Oceanside and. You can find them at your local grocer here in around Southern California. Todd, do you what like, are you doing? Would you prefer people no wear one, their glasses like no this? No one does that. Like no one does that. Or like this? Like that? Yeah. Which one do you like better? The one in the back. Okay. Or this. At New Greens, New Greens, die later than your friends. Simply the slogan that everyone wants to have. Die later. Die the healthier. slogan that Todd just made up. No, I didn't make that up. That's kind of their slogan. Uh, Outlive your friends. Die later. New greens. It's uh, all your salad goodness <laughs> in a glass. What? And vegetables. And vegetables. That's I salad. would love for you to get an actual bullet point. Devin keeps giving me list. the actual bullet points, but it's boring. A, de- a bullet pointed list for an actual sponsor. Look, we are making. To make them happy. We are making a difference for them. Okay. I know that. We're pushing the envelope. I'm, I've been We're told. pushing envelopes. At pedal.electric. It's e-bike season. It's still, <laughs> it's still, still e-bike is season. and always will be. It's still, no, this is, we're really coming into e-bike season. I because rode Because this e-bike. is when parking becomes a premium. Once spring break is over and we start to move into the next big holiday is Memorial Day. Yeah. You are not going to find any parking around here on Memorial Day. Guess what? I went on the e-bike date with the person that got you that June popcorn thing have i mentioned that we have the <laughs> <laughs> popcorn bucket yes so uh pedal electric bikes are the best bikes built for two you know it's really hard to ride a bike with two dune popcorn buckets it, it's it's hard to control mm-hmm. you're gonna have to place it somewhere else where would you put that where would you put that we'll Kay. figure well, that out keep going uh vessel shipping at vessel oh yeah you're supposed to be doing no, you can stuff. go you already started vessel.com I mean, this is the, the most simple, effective, easy way to ship. I just shipped something to uh, John Herndon, who remixed Sunbender's hit song, White Lamborghini. Sent him some uh, Sunbender merch and some stickers from. I used Vessel.com and sent him stickers from. Monday Mass? Diecutstickers.com. Oh, die yeah, see, right there. Right. right oh, there. that was a segue. Right there. At Diecutstickers.com. Do you have... Some amazing ideas for stickers, and you've just been wondering how you can get it done quickly, efficiently, and with precision. Well, die cut stickers, D O T C O M, is where you can get that done. They're, mo- they're the most precise sticker makers in the business. So, uh, speaking of business, the if turnaround. you do have a business, the turnaround is fast. Look, that's what the best part. Better way to advertise your business than have your stickers put around town. At Mint at Tours. At Mint Tours. Mint Tours has. This Mount Bachelor event coming up, and I don't think I'm going anymore. <laughs> That's a great selling point, but Todd. Thanks I'm just, so much. I'm just I'm sure saying, Mint Tours is going to be so happy they sponsored I, this I'm podcast. Not, I'm not a linchpin for this. Hey, this event's happening. I'm not going. Well, I think I, I was supposed Thanks to go. Thanks for sponsoring but the podcast. Mint Tours is having their Mount Bachelor getaway, and that starts this weekend. The 11th. And it is going to be fun. Uh, it's a combination between Solomon Snowboards and Tactics Board Shop. Harrison Gordon's going to be there. Tight. And it is going to be a good time, even though I might not be there. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a better time since Todd's not going to be there. Because that'll mean the other people there will get to shine and be funny, and Todd won't be trying to take all the attention. I'm... I'm going to be busy. <laughs> He's doing something. I'm going to be busy this bu- busy this weekend. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to... Save have... some dune bucket for the rest of us, okay? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, yeah, that, that was our... Oh, Panic and Coffee and Tea? I at Panic it. and Coffee. I got it. I already hit that. Do you know they deliver? Panic and Coffee? Yeah. Who delivers it? Panic and... What if we got a job delivering? Do you ever wonder, like, how... Yeah, I, wa- 
about what about you, airplane food? No, I'm just wondering. Like, how hard is it? Okay, so say say you want to upgrade your vehicle, right? Okay. You want to get a new car. Okay. Okay. Say say you want to get a new fancy car. Okay. Say something like with a with like a monthly payment of like fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. Just say I'm just I'm just throwing this I'm just throwing this up. A Maserati. Whatever. Maserati. No an one, Audi. No one fucking drives an Audi R six. Okay. Yeah. Let's just like. What if you just got like an Uber job? Like, how hard do you think? I mean, like, do you think Uber's like? Is it weird? What is what is your question? I guess the question that was is like, like a ten minute lead up to know, a non question. Ah, that's kind of how it is. I'm like I'm running numbers in my head. Like I wonder. What like, are you asking? Do you think it's weird? Or like uh, like would you drive Uber? Like like no no not even a like Uber eats. People do it. Not even like Uber eats. Millions of people do it. I know. What you wouldn't do it? I had. Two Uber rides when we went out to Ken Block uh, Ken Block Day uh, for the uh, Forty Three Institute. Mm-hmm. My ride from the airport to Park City was great. Mm-hmm. That was super cool. Oh, the other ride wasn't super f- like the fanciest uh, Rav Four I've ever been in. Really? Yeah. Water, yeah. charging cables. The ride from Park City to the airport. See was the a nicer different. the nice. See, I just like if I did it, I wouldn't drive at night. I okay. wouldn't. I wouldn't drive. You don't want people throwing up in your right. car. Right. You don't want you. You don't drive in like party zones. Right. But like, if you're driving to the airport. Right. I fucking love driving. I would. I love driving around. You know. I would totally. I would totally do it. How much do you think you make an Uber a month? A couple grand. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. Okay, so I got, into, sur- I, I got into Uber on the way from Park City to the airport, and it was very strange because the person driving wasn't. Super friendly. They did not say anything. They I don't think you. Sh- I don't think back. you should say anything. But the, I was in. I got in the back seat, and the passenger seat was pushed super far back, like away from like the reverse. How it should be. Wait. What do you mean? Okay. So you want to be, you be closer looked, to the driver? No. I looked in. The, yeah. There was stuff on the passenger seat. This is an Uber driver's way of saying don't, don't sit right. up front. What if you? Moved, I don't want to sit next. What if you, to you. moved it? <laughs> Move this stuff. I want to <laughs> sit by you, but. If you really want the person to feel comfortable and sit in the back, pull the front seat, the passenger seat, up as far as it goes. Oh, I see what you're saying. This was pushed back. Right. So I could barely fit my – I had to put my legs behind the driver. But, And then it's also I'm wondering if I'm driving an Uber, I don't want my passenger just behind me. I want my passenger in passenger Mm -hmm. side back. Mm -hmm. This was kind of telling me that this driver – was trying to direct my body right behind the driving seat, mm-hmm. which is weird because that's how you get murdered. Well, it's not. The, what are those things called? The, s- the strategy. What is what is it called? The uh, garrot. Yeah, get rot. But if you're driving, that's probably not a, s- a strategy that you would employ. Is I don't to want to kill s- the driver while you're driving. Well, it's not the smartest thing to do no. on many reasons, on many levels. I don't think so. Uh, you certainly news. wouldn't get there <laughs> where you were going. Skate News is brought to you by Opus Footwear. For skaters, by skaters, great skate shoes. I've been skating them a lot, and they feel awesome. Tampa Pro went off in the past uh, couple of days. It was four or five days of skateboarding. Uh, Yuto Horigomi killed it, easily won the street comp. And if you, did, did you watch his run? I did. Fi- finished it off with a nolly late heel flip board slide. It was wild, and I, I the, but I think that I think the person that everyone really liked to watch in the street area was Grant Taylor. Yeah, Grant I feel Taylor. Like, I feel like yeah. I saw the most reposts of Grant Taylor's street run. I think anytime Grant Taylor skates, people are going to enjoy that. And you just you, you forget how damn good that I never dude forgot. is at skating a skate park. Uh, nobody forgot that. Well, I think some people do. Not anymore. Um, Tom Shar killed it, one vert, and he got second in the Karyuma cement thing, cement comp. By doing a frontside Smith stall on the roof of the building, dude, to pop in. Tom Shar is kind of on another level. Honorable mention to Grayson. Better and better. And Grayson better. Fletcher's frontside blunt on the shelf, not on the roof, but on the shelf that was about. Three feet lower than the roof. He shelved it. Yeah, he got shelved. Um, Gabriel Fortunato from Brazil got best trick with a long distance hard flip to manual. Do you see that? I don't remember. Hard that. flip, Manny down a like a bench. Uh, Giovanni Viana got uh, Bronson speed killer. 
Mizuho Hasegawa won women's vert. Our girl Bryce Wetstein got second. Rodil Jr. won the industry bro street comp. I think you might do pr- – you and I could probably get top 15 in the industry, in the bro, industry bro street bro? comp. I don't think you got to so. stay on your board. I don't think so. Because I think there's a lot of pressure as an industry bro to try really hard and try really hard tricks Th- okay, and fall. You need to take I'm not going to fall. There's so many gnarly I industry looked at the bros. List. I looked at the list. Who's on the list? Bunch of industry bros. What do you mean by industry bros? There's there so like many industry bros. Like the like. Okay, so Rodeal Jr. is a former pro, and obviously he's still at a pro level. So that's an industry bro pro. Right. What I'm saying is, you go down that list, and there's some there's some amazing skateboarders for sure. But I'm just saying, you and I could do some stuff. No, I don't. Okay, I could. I don't think so. I'm taking you out of my list of industry bros. There's a Japanese game show happening. It's called the TBS Kaso Skate Game. It's a million dollar skateboard obstacle course. Have you seen it, Todd? Yes. Pretty rad. Yeah. Do you think you get around that course? I think it's it's fascinating to watch how it works. It's also fascinating that that was greenlit. I love it. I don't think Japan I has the best. They like over the the past thirty years, the best game shows ever for sure have been Japan for sure. I will say the number one is Silent Library. What's that? That's where there's a bunch of people in a library, okay, and they sit around a big table, right? And there's all these cards put on the table, and they okay. reach for the cards, and they flip over the card, and on that card will be like one person gets like the whammy card, right? Okay, and it's like you can't you can't make noise, and there's everything from like you know, uh, taking like a a full elastic band to the throat, to one was like you're gummed by a man with no teeth, <laughs> and this guy just comes in and starts nibbling on the and you can't laugh, or <laughs> like the one with just like that's so good where they just beat each other. They have blindfolds on. They just beat each other in a room. Oh yeah, yeah. I like or like one. the one that would say, "Is it food?" Where Japan it's like on top for game shows, for right? Sure. There's, have you seen the one that is it food? No. It's like where they come out on a set, right? And it's like some like some percentage of the stuff on like a set, like a like a set, like a Tonight okay, Show yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. Some percentage of that set is is, food. is actually food, and they go up to things and they're all, uh, and they, and they like try to bite. They try to bite it. <laughs> it's you so have a good. Vast knowledge of Japanese. I do. Game I'm shows. fascinated by it. That's. I mean, that's how we got that. Um. The most extreme challenge, or whatever that show was, like that's Wipeout. We need more of that. Like Wipeout is the best show on TV. More Wipeout by far. More Wipeout. A few angry Brooklynites are plan plan to gather outside of the Tony Hawk, Rodney Mullen, Dark Slides and Secret Tapes event, where Why? they go and they go on a talk because they're saying they do not want a skate park at Mount Prospect. Okay. Tony Hawk and his nonprofit are trying to build an awesome new park, mm-hmm. but they're saying it's going to destroy their precious green space. This is a very this is maybe one of the first times where I've had uh, I've heard of besides angry Karen neighbors that don't want a skate park in their backyard. This is the first time I've had I've heard pushback against Tony Hawk and his skate park project. Hmm. So Brooklynites are not feeling it, but Tony Hawk, as we all know, will prevail. He always does. In other Tony Hawk news, uh, in a new show called Loot. What are they going to do, throw lattes at you? Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to throw a pour over at you. <laughs> that's a, that's so a $15 copy. I'm so angry, I'm going to blog about you. My, uh, Maya Rudolph gets skate lessons from Tony mm-hmm. Hawk uh, in her new show, the Apple TV hit series Loot. Uh, basically, it's a woman. Maya gets divorced, uh, and she... Gets $87 million. She can go on a self-discovery spree, and part of that discovery spree is paying Tony Hawk to give her skate lessons. Maya Rudolph is low-key one of the funniest people on the planet. Oh, high-key. Okay, Skate Nerd is back on Trans with Skateboarding and Skateboarding.com. Blair Alley is the host. He's the best. We love him. Uh, so right now I'm going to ask Todd a few Skate Nerd questions. Okay. Okay, do <laughs> not look at my screen because the I'm answers not. are right there. Okay, Kay. here we go. These are questions taken from Transworld Skateboarding's Skate Nerd, I mean, I'll put which on is my, back I put on my in skate, action. Skate Nerd glasses. Which legacy brand, board brand whiffed recently with its International Women's Day graphics by Mark McKee? Whiffed? Yeah, blew it. Plan B. Yeah, good job. Uh, if you were at the Swamp Fest skate event, which state were you in? Florida. The Lean Air is named after which 80s skate pro? Neil Blender. Who got their first pro model shoe on America recently? On America? Yeah. 
recently. First pro model shoe. Yeah. Andrew Reynolds. Who? He's at about 12. Dakota <laughs> Servold. Yeah, see, that's that's new school. Which legendary street skater has taken up residency on a farm in Ohio? A farm in Ohio? That'd be the Muska. What is Spike Jones's real name? David Nielsen. <laughs> Adam Spiegel. Uh, what Hollywood actress was Steve Barrow once married to? Uh, Juliette Lewis. Damn, dude, you're pretty good. You should go on Skate Nerd. Maybe Blair will do a Skate Nerd with oh, us. Oh, Blair, let's Blair. do that. Skate nerd, I'm Chris and Todd. I'm no, maybe people probably won't watch it. It has to be like eighties, nineties centric. Okay, okay, Blair. I know Blair's watching. Blair, skate nerd, us. Even mm. if it's just a personal game, maybe we'll play strip skate nerd. No. And if you get it wrong, you no. take off clothes. Let's, we're gonna play popcorn bucket skate nerd. <laughs> Who gets to go home with the popcorn bucket? <laughs> That's the championship title. Uh, the Abe shoe. If you uh, are interested at all about skateboarding. If you follow any skateboarding we- uh, sites or Instagram accounts, you've seen the hype behind the Ave shoe. It's very technical. It's super tech. It's probably one of the most tech van shoes I've ever seen. It actually looks pretty dope. You know, I'm going to... Ave says it's cool. I'm going to say it's cool. Listen. What? I've stopped wearing skate shoes. Except for when I'm skateboarding. Okay. And my ankles... Well, and you, s- you should skate in these Opus slip-ons. Right? No, I do skate in those. Okay. I'm just saying, when I'm not skateboarding... And I do remember this. You're from all like grown up. From a from an old, there was an old Powell video where like, they're they're the Bones Brigade's eating dinner. Okay. And they zoom in on Cab, who's wearing like Doc Martens. Right. And they're like, you know, trying to clown him by zooming in on these shoes. And, like, then it goes ba- and it goes back to Cab, and he's like, uh, "These aren't my skate shoes. When we're skating, I put my skate shoes on." Right. And it was like so, and that's kind of how I feel. But okay. like I, I've been wearing like. Just like runners, and runners. Stuff. Oh my god, my feet are like. You're acting like you just discovered. I this. did. I literally. This is like I've discovered something. What was it before? I could, because I think there can be a mental block with people like you, mm-hmm. who put on a pair of running shoes, and as they because start they to look, walk out of their look, house, they look goony, dude. Exactly. Ninety percent of runners you lack the have confidence. like a. They have like. Let a me see. What, what are you wearing? Do you lack the confidence to walk into your house and running? See, those are very low key. You know where these I got are, these? Are row shoes? Alyssa, you know where I got these? I got these in the sample room at Quick. They right. were there from a photo shoot, and they just happened to be my size, and I took them. Are those updated row shoes? These are sick. I mean, look at these. They're just there's not much going on. Well, we have a shoe sponsor, but I'm just probably saying, not like for this long. This is what I'm wearing. This is ha- Alyssa, this is what he does with the sponsors. And I also wear I also wear those um, Luso clouds with the arch support. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to do my part for my body. <laughs> it's a little late. That should be a sticker. I'm trying to do my I'm part. I'm trying for to my do body. my part for my body. <laughs> just put that everywhere. Uh, snow news is brought to you by Mammoth Mountain at Mammoth Mountain. Still have tons of snow. Spring break is by far, far from over. It's not. It's, it's popping. It's still dumping. It's dumping. Yeah. Mammoth is going off. They, they, they just got like a f- <laughs> like <laughs> two feet of snow <laughs> here in the mountains last weekend. I like when you do that. <laughs> But Mammoth, Mammoth got a dump last week. Yeah. Mammoth is going to be kicking until at least Bro, I'm Memorial be s- Day and then beyond. Usually I'm two. snowboard in trunks. And that's it. Do you snowboard in a wetsuit? You know, you know when you do the trifecta? Yeah. What if you just did the dufecta where you just you go surfing in the morning and then you have to keep the wetsuit on and then go snowboard in the wetsuit? The yeast fecta. But you <laughs> yeast fecta, but you have to wear the wetsuit in the car. That's tight. That is very tight. Okay. Uh, all right. What else we got? Uh, Eclipse snowboarding went down at Loon Mountain. They had 99.3% coverage. That's nearly full coverage at Loon. Where is Loon Mountain? Loon's in New Hampshire. And the pro- the live I mean, or die. I have talked to a lot of people that live in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Okay. The amount of, like, uh, Eclipse tourism. Yeah. Like, fucked up the East Coast. Just, like, so many people streaming in I to, like, just be in the dark. Just... Fucking wait till tonight. It's the same thing. You know? Oh, you're so pessimistic. I'm just saying. Like, it's like this. People love it. People are having fun. Yeah. But, like, (laughs) yeah. I'm just, you know, we we were kind of talking about. You're anti eclipse, aren't you? You're an anti eclipse site. There's a ski resort in Maine called Saddleback. And Saddleback has probably one of four half pipes made out of snow on the East Coast. Okay. And 
I was kind of enter- like slightly entertaining the idea. Not really entertaining. I thought about it for five minutes while I was on the toilet about maybe going back there. And thought about maybe kind of maybe wanting to go Going back there and shooting in that half pipe during the eclipse. Because it's, Kay. you know, the light does get really cool on either side right. of totality. Yeah. There's I mean, filter. totality is just like you go in the closet, you turn the light off. Big deal. It's dark. It's a good word, though. Totality? Yeah. Yeah. I'm totality whatever. Yeah. Total, total eclipse. Um, but anyways. Does uh, Bonnie Tyler get anything? He has nothing. She, although, I bet her plays. Turn around. There's been a lot of linka- linkage to that song today. Yeah, but that's a total eclipse of the heart, not the sun. All right. Anyway, semantics. Uh, I thought about doing that, but, they, but I'm sure people were back there at Loon flying off jumps. There'll probably be some really cool photos coming out from that. Yeah, yeah. I think I can't wait to see those. Don't show Todd because he's anti eclipse, apparently. I'm not anti eclipse. I'm just Torment a Magazine has re- released their writers of the year. Drum roll, please. We Parker Zamowski and Mia, Mia Brooks. Brooks. Why did they? Why did Parker? So let's start with Parker. Why did Parker get Torment's writer of the year? Video part. Okay. He's gotten a bunch of covers and yep. coverage this year. Parker's, Parker's out in New Hampshire. He's from New Hampshire. Parker Zamowski can't lose. Parker Zamowski can't lose. No one even remotely gets that reference. What was that show called? Parker Lewis can't Parker lose. Parker Lewis can't lose. What about Mia Brooks? Mia Brooks makes her is so awesome. Great. She's out of the UK, and she is the next. You know, we had... Uh, she's a heavy metaler, too. She's She That's loves heavy metal. She was... Um, she's, com- like she's coming into her own right now as far as being a contest powerhouse we right. thought uh zoe sadowski senate she's been the one that's been leading the charge of women's progression yep and mia brooks is the one that's kind of taking the torch from her and pushing it even further so two great choices from torment yeah i think it's really cool uh also we had uh the bomb hole cup went down this weekend at brighton nice and that was a really really great time uh one of the funniest things i thought from the bomb hole cup was the official judges blindfolds <laughs> when they Sorry. said uh, it is I now judges. We are about to start the event. Please put on your blindfolds. I love that. I thought it's probably very triggering to some judges. You know, we get a bonus from Machu Picchu every time we take a sip. We do. Yeah. Sweet. We get those uh, snowboarding gold coins. And you one, get, like at the grocery store when you can you can put it in the bin. Mm-hmm. What do you think happens to those little wooden nickels? I have eight dollars now. Thank you, Machu Picchu, for the bonus. Snowboard Magazine has just launched a new podcast because they heard the Monday Mass is doing so great that we have so much happening here that there's extra spilling over. Mm. So Snowboarder Magazine is is gonna they're just gonna concentrate on snowboarding. They're gonna give podcasts. It's to, not look to everybody doing all three point. sports is that's no easy thing to do. I don't know. I do not recommend it. There it's is tough. not one action sports podcast out there that has as much. Dune popcorn bucket coverage. That's as we right. Do. Oh, did you hear that? What? Oh, it's also it makes noises too. Musical um, instrument. Yeah, well, this is going to be a great one. This is for snowboarding enthusiasts, and it's called Mark My Bird. It's hosted by our friends Mark Clavin, Mark Clavin, and, and T Bird, T Bird Monteroso. They've Mark already my bird. oh, because T Bird and Mark that's their names. They've already suggested that we do a crossover. Let's do it with them. Let's do it. Never cross the streams. We do all three sports. That's so. what I say. It's just a little bit more extreme. Uh, let's well, also talk about you got. we have 43 day that we just went down. That was awesome. Chris and I went there. Here's this is this is what you got when you went there. Among other things. There was the Mountain Lab throwback. It was a huge successful benefit for raising money for the 43i Foundation, which is Ken Block's legacy foundation. Yeah. That foundation, uh, the mission statement is to if you are if you are showing promise but you do not have the means in motorsports, action sports or in the creative they will help you to fulfill your dream and yeah. Ken Ken was always about uplifting everyone around them and giving them the power to level yourselves up. So Yeah, and sh- and shout out to Pam Zam who is the uh the boss over there at 43 Institute. She worked some magic. She four three, worked her ass off. Okay, 43 in the United States of America, four April three, third. April third is Ken Block Day. It is now Ken Interna- Block Day. internationally, and so that is huge. Ken Block Day is four three, and you can check out the four three Institute on the internet. Todd and I hosted some cool uh, panel discussions. That's why my voice is fried. 
Bro, you've never. It's you don't use it was microphones so often. I it was get it. So you just you know you don't know so how to do it. So loud. It was you gotta so just be a little closer to the mic. That's it like was so loud in there that that when it was over and you were just trying to have a conversation with people, you had to scream at the top. Because my friend Mixmaster Mike was going off. Your on friend. The ones and twos. Yeah, my friend. I feel like uh, we did a pretty good job hosting. Um, it was a little wild at first, but we reeled it in. I definitely. I don't think we actually job. talked about it. Oh, afterwards? Yeah. I think we did a pretty quick. good job. No, we did a good job. Yeah. I mean, we should do a podcast together. Uh, nerd News. Nerd News uh, Nerd news is brought to you by Kelly, the provider oh, of wait. the Dune Bucket. I have more news. Bucket. I have more snowboard news. Is it nerdy snowboard news? Kind of. Okay, go ahead. I got my first sample uh, of my new... Stool sample? <laughs> of my new... Uh, Project? My, my new um, reissue of... of my well, board. Hold on, y- you haven't even talked about this. You keep because it's, it's a mysterious. It's thing. kind of top secret, and okay, I didn't. Okay, re- so you just let the cat out of the bag. But it's it's, I've been alluding to it for a long time, and it's like one of those things that was such it's such a big deal to me that I didn't think it was real until it showed up at my house. Okay, so and this now would have been a great opportunity real. for you to bring no said product. It's a to sample. It's a first sample. Uh, you'll see it when I post photos of it but i can tell you right now i would now, love for you to do an exclusive on our podcast that you host it's freaking awesome and i'm like i'm floored i'm floored That's the top sheet the, led the, with that the top sheet needs to be worked on a little bit there's a little bit of work What's to do on the top sheet? the top sheet's the top of the snowboard but the base like as far as like all we had to go on to create to recreate the base okay. from 1994 was pictures of Old board. Here's another clue for you as to what this mysterious news Todd's alluding to is about. Well, I'm excited. Hopefully, you will share more news I'll share on the Action Sports News podcast that you co-host with I'll me. share a photo. When? When I get a photo of it. But I want to get a photo of me. I, I have to go and shoot photos of it. Oh, actually riding Actually it? riding it, and I'm going to do that on Wednesday. Would have been sick to do it during an eclipse. Yeah, we don't really have the eclipse. Just get like... 66%. But I don't even think so. Like when we were here, it just it didn't even look like it looked like you um oh, were looking through like a beer it's bottle. It's a scientific fact. What is? You don't think, but scientists have proven it. Sixty six percent. Sixty six. Do we have any more snowboarding news? No. Sixty six percent. Nerd news is brought to you by the Dune popcorn bucket. <laughs> Dune. And new greens. Dune. It's a popcorn bucket. There's also a movie. I'm this. Have you seen this? Blown one? away did that you that's your gift. Did you see the Saturday Night Live skit yes. with this? It is the best. I'm blown away. I can't believe I, I have a Dune popcorn bucket. I My girlfriend got it for you, so it's partially mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's half mine. <laughs> Can I just have the top half? <laughs> <laughs> you take the bucket. I'll take the top half. We'll talk about that after the show. Anyway, oh uh, the last, <laughs> this is very bittersweet news. The be- very, very bittersweet. Pretty, pretty. Pretty bittersweet. The last episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, of the last season ever of Curb Your Enthusiasm, is out now. I haven't even seen, I have saw only saw oh. one episode this season. I, I envy you, because I've watched them all, and I, I just, I want to savor it. I want to, like, really sit with them. I'm going to rewatch. Th- I'm going to rewatch it from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Because it's bittersweet, too, because this last season is just as funny as every season. It's so good. This is not a spoiler for you, but there's an episode where Bruce Springsteen has a big cameo in it. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those, sh- I had to pause it to c- stop laughing. It's that nice. You're laughing and you had to pause and you back to it like Is it awkward, like uncomfortable laughing? Yeah. It's Kirby Enthusiasm. The weirdest thing about Kirby Enthusiasm to me is like, I do find it's, it's freaking hilarious, right? <laughs> but I have to like be. Like my, I don't have to be in a mindset to watch like mindless sci-fi. Like I can just sit down and do that right. any time of the day. Curb your enthusiasm. I have to like because it makes me so uncomfortable. Yeah. That I, what are you doing? I'm just getting ready for questions. It makes me so uncomfortable that I have to be like mentally equipped. See, that's what you should have ran with. All day. What if you just ran it, went into a bank like that? Just making a deposit. But now I'm not going to be able to read my questions. What if you went into a bank with a gun and you were like, I need to make a deposit? And you were just aggressively. I'm edit that out. Aggressively. Okay. 
That is not funny, Todd. Hypothetically, if you went into a bank. That is not funny. You didn't have a gun, but you told them you had a bomb. Okay. And you s- and you said I'm gonna I need to make an aggressive deposit. Oh, uh, this is funny. Okay. Are you ready for questions? Yep. Brody Brady Farr says, <laughs> "Look at there it is. Hold on, hold that up to the screen. What? I need to see it. How? M- <laughs> now it's gone. How much does Todd look like Troy McClure from The Simpsons? Troy McClure. I'm Troy McClure. <laughs> A lot. Really? Yeah. yeah. I look like Troy McClure. Yes. Um. Oh, this is pretty good. This is from uh. Ginger Slaughter, or Ginger's Laughter. <laughs> what? Ginger's Laughter says, thanks for taking my question last week. What are the top five excuses to tell your wife so you can go surfing? <laughs> um, Is he g- listing some? Or we, we need to make some up. We need to make some up. Well, I mean, you can be honest and say, look, honey, and this can work for husbands and or wives. Is, look, honey, um, you know, I need to help myself uh, – through a mental health uh, dip. I left something at the beach. I'll be right back. I have to go get it. I left one of our perfectly clean house towels down at the beach on the shoreline. That's way too much. That's way too much detail. No one's um, going to believe you. You, you can need say to be. I'm going you need golfing. to be. You need to be a matter of fact and vague. Um. What else? What do you got? Are Are you going to lie to your wife? Wasn't that what you're? Wasn't that what they're no. insinuating? No. It's, it said excuse. An excuse is well. I don't. I don't condone by facto lying, a lie. But you know something you can say to get out of or into anything is. I want to go watch the eclipse. I my friend is going through some stuff and I gotta go help. There's and a that could be true because if you're going surfing with your friend, you're helping. There's a beached whale and I need to help move it. Which coincidentally, there's a beached whale. Out th- did you know that? I just got called in to help move this No, but do you know whale. we have a beached whale right now that's no. moving its way down the, c- on the coast? And you know what that means? Shark? S- shark food. Not good. Um, so there's a couple of excuses for you. Uh, I, just th- I just think be honest with your partner. Just tell the truth. Say, I just, I'm really good at surfing, and if I don't keep surfing, I'm not going to be as good. Right now, I'm better than Todd. Do you want and me? If I don't keep surfing, I'm not going to be as good as Todd. Do you want me to be fat? Horrible. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Aiden Flattery says, "Flattery will get you everywhere." Aiden. <laughs> if Todd was a pasta, what shape would he be? Fusilli. Of course, Fusilli, because he's silly. He's Jerry. a silly guy. Um, Board Yak says, "Oh, this is a long one." Jeez. Board Yak says. Todd, thanks for calling out the natural selection highlights were just crash reels. I suppose they couldn't cut any of the ads to show full runs. Also, it was worst judging I've ever seen. Wow. It's bad for the sport, you know. We've been through a lot of judging things, but I feel like we pretend it's not happening. This is a long one. Just like Gabriel Medina. That's a Gabriel Medina quote. The natural selection writers were all class. Love to see it. So wait. What's the question? (laughs) Is there a question in there? It's really long. Um. Oh, he was just kind of s- like s- maybe he's complimenting natural well, selection. Well, uh, and I will I will say this: a lot of people were asking me why we didn't get to see full complete runs from some people, and the reason being is full polls, if you will. No, not full polls. It's more like the like they f- people fell right, Kay. and we showed that they decided that to keep the broadcast under seventeen hours, that yeah. they would have to cut out. Some of the some of the footage of people trying to get up out of the snow, and because that face kind of like saddled before it dropped into the second pitch, uh-huh. people were like literally pushing out of that. And oh. there's, we don't, you don't, wanna I don't want to see that. You want to see that? You want to just trim it up and go. So yeah, I don't want to see that's that. why. But um, also you know the judging. I don't pretend to know what people are judging about anymore. <laughs> I, I really don't. Um, because sometimes it's really, really obvious to you and I, which I would imagine would be really obvious to judges, but they're looking at something else yeah. sometimes. I I have no qualms with the natural selection judges. Who won? Oh. We uh, didn't even talk about that in Snow News. Mikey Cicerelli. I forgot. Didn't we talk about natural selection last week? Oh, no shit, because it came out... On Thursday, Todd, you're in charge of snow. Yeah, news. I know, but I, I, I do. Everybody I've, knows I've you're in charge of snow news. I've done so much of this stuff, like snowboarding. 
news? No, just like events, like in the past month. Okay, so <laughs> natural selection. If, if we could edit. If we we would to edit. But anyway, this was a uh, natural selection. We're I back totally, to I totally now. forgot that it that it aired. It's kind of a big deal. Last week, you were and on yes, it. there's b- like a lot of controversy between uh, Nils Mindyk and Mikey Cicerelli as who won. Uh, there was some arguing that Mikey Cicerelli, because he went bigger, that's he had bigger Bigger's tricks, better. Uh, and that you know Nils, because Nils was riding switch, but he didn't do as big and dynamic of moves. Okay, but there was some other judging shit that was in in there before we got to the final that I feel like may have been may have gone the wrong way. It was just I just uh, I'm tired of talking about judging. All right. I know, but like you know I personally I think I just kinda keep it just kinda comes back to the fact that like if you want to have the best judging possible and you want these people to get you know to give give their all, you gotta pay them. You gotta pay them enough to to really be you know, really put their names behind it. And when you say like, okay this is a judged event. Yeah. And you put the names of the judges on the screen with their Instagram. Like, take a look, you know, like you're going to pay them, but when you do pay them, you're also, you're sliding some money across the table, and what they have to do in return is they have to put their money where their mouth is. Okay. And so we're going to give you their <laughs> Instagram accounts <laughs> so that you can blow well, them the Well, they introduce the referees and judges er, and Kinda. stuff for professional football and all that. Yeah. It's I like, don't I don't really, I don't give and take. You pay them well. But then they also put their name on the line as their stamp of approval, and if it's, you know, complaining about judges is just so it's pr- it's trending. It's kind of trending. The trend. Um, yeah. Todd, what are your thoughts on this? Starting the 2024-2025 season, Sundance hey, will. Hey, look at this. Kaipo Guerrero says that WSL, uh, WSL should do that. They should do that. Yeah. What's up, Kaipo? He's not going to respond to you. It doesn't work like that. What? It's, it's not a telephone. The files. Oh, he's in the phone. But anyway, I do think it's, I think, you know, when you have someone from the WSL, uh, like one of their lead commentators saying, yeah. yeah, like the judges should have to put their balls on the table a little bit, but they also should be compensated for that. Yeah. You know, and if they, okay. there's a give and take there. Right. Okay, next question. Okay. What's up, Kaipo? Good to see you, buddy. Um, okay, so starting in 2024, 2025 winter season, Sundance will be requiring helmets to be worn by all skiers and snowboarding. Porter Bridger Carter says, what are your thoughts on this, Todd? Have you heard anything like this? I mean, Sundance, the ski area. I think that... Um, I thought that was a film festival. Sundance is a film festival, but it's also a ski area that's owned Machu by Robert... Machu Picchu mentioned us on the Instagram. Robert Redford. Listen, okay. I think that you should wear helmets. I don't think that anything should be mandated i'm very much a yeah look you life take life as it comes at you however you want to okay i that's that's how i mean look live free or die kind of new hampshire i just kind of feel like you know we should be able to have uh some control over some things yeah maybe yeah i don't think mandating helmets is gonna fix no it's not gonna fix shit there's it's plenty of this people there's off. plenty of people that break Blow their knees out. And they're wearing a helmet. Guards, you know, mandate protection if you're gonna use a dune. I don't want to live protector. in a. I don't want to live in a Wally society. You know what I mean? Like the movie. Bubble wrap everything. Yeah, like Nerf football. Yeah. Uh, Danny Caputo says, "Here's a poop question for Todd. Would you rather wear and use a diaper for the rest of your life, or have to poop in your hand every time and toss it over whatever fence is nearby?" <laughs> so. The question from Danny, this is a great question. Diapers, always, forever, or any and every time you have to poop, you have to poop in your hand and you have to throw it over a fence. So let's say you're at home, Mm -hmm. you have to go outside and throw it over your fence. What would you rather do? Who lives next door? It doesn't, you'd be around it, you'd you'd be on a trip. Any fence. Any fence. I don't want to wear a diaper. No, a fence. I'm not wearing a diaper. Let's just put it that way. I'm not wearing a diaper. Okay. Fair. Got a couple more questions here, Todd, Mm -hmm. before we go, before we cut you loose. Give that beautiful voice a a break. Brent LaFleur, Becky Bubb, says, Series finale of Curb was awesome. Love the throwback to Seinfeld. Kind of bittersweet. That was a great comment, not a question, but I agree with you. That's a spoiler. Double Ejects says, 
What do you do when you get stuck with a backpack speaker on the lift? Today Ooh. I tried. Can you turn that shit down? I'm trying to listen to Modest Yahoo. It wasn't at all effective. Who? Well. Well, <sighs> double ejects. Maybe you could say, can I play a couple songs on your speaker as we go up the lift? And you could put, you could pop your Modest Yahoo on your new friend's speaker and everybody wins. Because Modest Yahoo hits every time. All I the time. I wonder, I mean, the, the I feel like this trend of lift line speakers is being fueled by the hate of lift line speakers. And people Some people are antagonists. Maybe there would maybe somebody can invent an app that disables because the, the you point it and you I feel like the military has that where they can oh, dis sure. they can disable Bluetooth signals. Yeah. If I could get that, that would be great. I Isaac Ratana says it's my birthday, Chris. Also, I wanted to know, what is your favorite go-to guitar for sounds and shredding? Uh, this is Monday Mass. Uh, first of all, happy birthday, Isaac Rutana. Uh, um, Reza says, fuck Modest Yahoo. Whoa, dude. What did the Yahoo ever do to you, bro? Just because he sings reggae? Pop reggae? Matis, maybe, not, maybe Matis Yahoo is not for you. Mm. That was pretty good. Write that down, Todd. You could use that on a lift line. Okay, um, keep going. So, happy birthday, Isaac Rotana. I have a PV, a 1979 PV T40 bass. It's an absolute monster. Weighs about 50 pounds. I love it. And I have a, uh, I got a double neck that I've been playing my solo shows with. And other than that, I play Fender guitars. One of the new songs dropping from Sunbender. Ooh, very soon. We got some new Sunbender songs. Three new songs coming. They're good, right? We recorded them with Chris Prescott. I think they're good. You're probably going to love them. They're probably going to be your favorite songs. All right. Yeah. Will you send them to Abe first? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, Assorted Surf Picks wants to know. Picks for Margaret River. <laughs> I'm gonna just going to go Easy Path, Katie Simmers, John John Florence. Because I was right about Bells. Um, I think Griff's going to win. Okay. Margaret. And which woman? I think Katie. Katie. She's going to win everything. Mm -hmm. Mike Kajewski says, question for Monday Mass, when will we be able to reschedule my session at Palm Springs Surf Club? Yeah, what is up with that place? Have you heard anything about that? You know who would be a great person to call about that? I heard they had a party. Kalani Rob. I heard they had a party not too long ago. I haven't seen any clips, but I think the best thing I, I could, Todd and I both have computers out. We could go look at it, but maybe, Mike, you go look. Maybe the website's up. Do you think that, when, is, when is Coachella? Is that like soon? Coachella. Coachella's this weekend? What? Okay. Oh, confirmed. Coachella's this so weekend. You Are there any good ba bands playing at Coachella? Yeah, who's this playing year? at Coachella? Eh. Who got I, I would think that they would want to have. Stone Roses. I they would want to have the Palm Springs Surf Club open for Coachella. Well, they wanted to have it open a long time ago, but there were some issues. It's not easy to move water around, it's one of the most difficult things to do. Hmm. There's anyway. a new water bender feature on Fortnite, which Todd wouldn't know about because he's a wuss. Devin Curran says, "Thanks for making going to work on Monday more fun. Don't forget to stare at the sun today." We did, Devin. What do you think the ratio of people in ERs right now is? Just like I don't know what happened. I can't, I can't see. It's, it's all black. Well, what did you do today? Uh, Nate Robinson said. Robertson says, "What do you think the future of snowboard videos looks like?" Will we ever go back to long-form videos, or we, will we continue to see shorter 10- to 15-minute videos? I think long-form videos is going to be a hard one to bring back just because the attention span of the average human being at this point is 40 seconds or less. Yeah. It's People were already bored of but maybe after two minutes. Maybe the, maybe the long-form video will come back, but I feel like in order for it to be successful, they would have to release it in pieces on social media, which would yeah. suck. Part by part, maybe? Yeah. Whatever I mean, you do, you can if you're making it, a snowboard video, you can assemble it at home. Go ahead and put those names. I don't know though, because people still go to the movies and watch like three-hour epics. There was a Chippa Wilson movie at La Paloma. It was packed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, maybe surf videos are better. Uh, Hannah Lee, Hannah, hi Hannah. She says, "When did strength training and going to the gym become a norm for professional action sports athletes?" You would know this, Todd. When did it become the norm? For a lot of super pipe competitors, um, well, basically when the half pipe became 22 feet deep. Because okay. you, you couldn't just 
That's the thing. That's a great that's measurement. A, yeah. It's, you couldn't really just get in there and you have to like train to do that. And I think, you know, endurance. Yeah. Because the tricks are so crazy now and the impacts are so hard that you've got to like put some effort into it. I think, honestly, I don't think, I think after the Andy Irons era of pro surfing, uh, because before that, I don't remember like gym videos and stuff. I still can't believe that your girl got us the Dune popcorn bucket. She's the best. I can't believe, like, this is like, I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Did she get it used? No, that's new. That's dead stock. All right, we are done here. One more. <sighs> Point broke says snowboard question. It's a snowboard question. Todd is a pro snowboarder. Or is at least pro at answering snowboarding questions. What is it? Uh, what is a trick an average snowboarder can learn mm -hmm. that a pro will respect and get a cheer from the lift? I feel like at this point in time, that if you want to, like, if you're going for cheers, you can learn the nollie front flip, which is, you know, you basically, you kind of rock backwards onto your tail. Wait, that's a beginner trick? It kind of is, dude. What are you talking it about? I could teach you how to do that in about five minutes. So you rock back on your tail, and you really load up the flex pattern of your board onto okay. the nose. And I you don't even know what a you flex pattern is. And you pop forward, and you do a front flip. I feel like that's like the, that's like the trick now that people that maybe don't have a lot of edge control or real skills off jumps, they're learning how to do that first. Kay. It's kind of like the, the backflip used to be that because backflip is just, you can go, you ride straight. You don't really even know how, have to know how to snowboard. Right. You just ride straight and go off. Okay. Yeah. So All that's, right. yes. Great answer. Great mm -hmm. questions. Thanks, everybody. We'll uh, see you guys later. Thank you, um, Kelly. This is you say thank you. Got, she got that for you. That has nothing to do with me. Kelly, thank you very much. Uh, I feel like this eclipse the bunny turds that you sent along with it. Wow. I mean, I'm just in blown away. I just, I can't fucking believe that this. Ha how many people did this have to pass? Like it's there, so there good. was there was focus groups and and meetings people of, of people that sign off on shit. And th and I this haven't even seen the new Dune yet. For real? For real. Look in there. I'm waiting for it to come. Uh, is it's it in there? It's right in there. <laughs> I don't want to look in there. All right. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Thank you. See ya. Bye.